Hi, my name is Cameron Knight. I'm here with you again today for another Photo Tuts Plus tutorial. Today, we're going to cover everything you could possibly need to know about light stands. Uh, they're a really simple piece of equipment that a lot of us are going to end up having to use. They last a really long time, and I want to just point out all the little things that you need to know to choose the right light stand when you're making your purchases. And not only that, but to know what you need to get the most out of your light stands in terms of accessories and some tips on how to use them and set them up properly. So let's get started. The very first thing I want to do is talk about three different types of light stands. Uh, there are many, many varieties of light stands out there for you to purchase. I'm going to cover three main types. The first type here is the normal light stand. It has a telescoping stand part to it, you can see here. And it has three legs that sit on the ground. You'll see here that I have some accoutrement on the front of the, on the top of this light stand that we'll get to later. But this is just your standard light stand. It's not a heavy duty light stand, it's just a normal duty light stand. Light stands don't have a lot to them and that's why they'll last a long time. When you get your first light stands, you'll keep them forever. Unless you end up selling them or trading them or something like that, uh, you'll keep your light stands forever. So that's a normal light stand. Those are the light stands I started out with. Um, I think they were around $40 to $60 when I bought them new. The next light stand I want to talk about is a compact version of that light stand. So this is the, a compact light stand. Um, the difference between this light stand and our other ones is that the legs fold up over the top of the light stand. Uh, the light stand I just showed you, the legs kind of collapse up this way instead of folding up this way. Um, so this saves a little bit of length uh, when you're packing them into a case or into your bag or anything like that. I have a couple of these. These are what I use for my compact lighting kit. I have a kit that I use specifically for um, like traveling and when I need to be, I don't want to carry around a lot of stuff. I carry a small lighting kit with uh, this light stand, two of these light stands, and then some hot shoe flashes uh, that all pack up into a very, very nice small package. So this is a compact light stand. Um, there are all kinds of companies make these, but it's just a compact version. Uh, the other main version of light stand is a little bit heavy, he more heavy duty for heavier lights. And it is an air cushioned light stand. Um, so this is, it looks a lot like our normal light stand that I showed you before. I can show you how these, how these work. You can see that the leg section uh, pushes down instead of folding over like we talked about. Uh, but the difference between this and a regular light stand is the, the way that the functionality inside the tube here when you collapse uh, and extend the sections. There's a little bit of an air seal around the telescoping tubes. So if your lights were to fall, the, uh, they won't hit really, really hard. So I'll show you this. If I squeeze this together really tight, it stops me from just smashing into it. And you can also see that it kind of is the air suction kind of springs it too. So if I push down on this really hard, it won't, it won't ever hurt your lights if this happens to fall or you don't tighten these uh, fasteners up enough, uh, you won't hurt your lights. So uh, that's just an air cushioned light stand. These come in a lot of varieties and many of the big, heavy, heavy duty light stands that you're gonna find are gonna be air cushioned. Um, but this just happens to be a small air cushioned stand. I'll show you the other stand again, just as a comparison. If I were to loosen this and extend it, uh, it just smacks home. It doesn't have anything to stop it from smacking and, and really hurting the light. Um, this isn't something to worry about so much so with hot shoe flashes, but with uh, larger lights with very fragile flash tubes or fragile modeling lights, uh, it's really nice to have the air cushion there just to help you uh, when you're taking the lights down, putting the lights up, just in case you slip, it'll keep your light safe. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, accessories that go on top of your light stand and all the things that you need to have to attach things to your light stand. So I'm going to get into a close-up view here and show you all of that. So this is the blank canvas of our light stand. It's essentially just the top of every light stand uh, looks like this. The top of everyone looks pretty much the same. Uh, this is called a spigot. Uh, what it is, it's a, it's a brass piece. Uh, they're usually brass. And on top of that is a thread that is the same as a tripod thread. So you could actually screw your camera into this, but that's sort of a standard thread size 
for all types of camera equipment. So um, lots of hot shoe adapters, all kinds of things use this type of thread mount, which is a quarter inch thread mount. You can also know here that there is a shoulder kind of in the middle, like a recess in the middle. That helps things that are screwed onto here from sliding off of here. So this is the basic kind of blank canvas. What we add to this is what really makes our lighting work, right? So the first thing I'll show you is just how a monolight might mount onto this. This is just a classic monolight. They slip right over the top. You can see that it sits on this shoulder right here on the bottom. And then it screws down right here. So that's how a monolight works. Uh, you can see here that uh, the adjustment for tilting the head is right here. And this is for an umbrella mount and a lot of other accessories for monolights mount to the flash itself. So there's no need to have any type of other things on our light stand because it's all built into the monolight itself. So if you're using monolights, that's all you really need. But if you're using anything else, you're going to need some other accessories. So let's take this off of here. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, if you're using hot shoe flashes, like a lot of people today do, you're going to need an umbrella bracket is what it is called. And this is our umbrella bracket. So this also loosens on the bottom. There is a hole. It slips right onto there just like our light stand or just like our monolite did. You tighten it down with this. And then with this bracket, all of our adjustments are built into this bracket because uh, hot shoe flashes, you know, speed lights don't have all the same accoutrement things that monolites have. So this tightens everything down. This is our uh, angle adjustment. So if you loosen that big handle there, this will tilt forward and backward. That's important. The next thing you'll see above that is our umbrella hole here. So if you loosen this knob right here, you can slide an umbrella into this hole and then tighten it down and keep it in place. And then above that, you're gonna notice a, a loosening knob here that things, and then on the top here is another hole that things can slide into. Uh, so this is a pretty standard size hole. And there's all types of things that can slip into there, like spigots. This is a standard spigot. On one side, you'll see a, uh, this is the quarter inch, and then this is three eighths, I believe. This is a bigger um, kind of standard mount. A lot of older things use this. Um, I have very, very few things that use this larger threaded uh, socket, but uh, most things use a small one. So you have that, that can slip right in there and then get tightened down. And then that mirrors the same mount that was on the top of our light stand. Um, you can also get things for like to quickly attach soft boxes, all kinds of stuff to slip in here. Um, but you're going to need spigots. Usually they come with a, when you buy an umbrella bracket, it usually comes with a few spigots, but uh, you're going to want those for sure. And the other thing that you're going to probably want off right off the bat is a hot shoe adapter, which screws right onto your spigot. And then you drop it in there and now you have a hot shoe. This is actually for a soft box adapter. That's why it has this extra slot right here. Um, but there's the hot shoe. So it loosens up. You can slide any kind of hot shoe flash right on there. Um, it's, it's called a cold shoe. So, I mean, if I, it's for hot shoe flashes, but it's called a cold shoe because it doesn't actually uh, attach to any kind, of, any kind of electronics or anything like that. It just is a cold shoe. Hot means that it has electric going through it. Cold means that it doesn't. Uh, here's another type of hot shoe adapter. You can see the same type of thread mount in the bottom there. And it has the same type of hot shoe on the top, or cold shoe on the top, sorry. Here's another thing that would attach to that. This is an optical slave. This also screws into the bottom, just like our other things. You would screw that in and then you have an optical slave. If you know what that is, it means that anytime a, any kind of flash activates, uh, the flash attached to this will activate at the same time. So that's another thing that we might go on here. And this is actually a hot shoe. You have a cord coming off of it that you can plug into another sync cord to plug it onto your camera. Um, and then you have also the socket on the bottom, just like our other one. And then you have the hot shoe, the actual hot shoe on the top. So this is a hot shoe adapter. These would, all, any of these could be used to attach a flash to a light stand. So I just wanted to show you that hot shoe option. 
You could attach this to a wireless, um, a wireless transmitter of some sort. That would all, that would work great. Uh, so now I want to talk about, I'm going to give you three tips for using your light stand that will hopefully help you out when you're, when you're using it. Uh, just in practice, instead of showing you the parts, we're going to go on and talk about use. So the first tip I want to give you for using your light stand is to talk about these little wing nuts that loosen and tighten uh, the light stand to make it get taller and shorter. Uh, these little things are not that tough. The more money you spend on your, on your light stand, the better off you'll be with these, but it's just a nut and a bolt. Um, so it, they're, not always, they're not always gonna be foolproof regardless of how much money you spend on them. But there are two parts. There is the loosening and tightening part that you can use just with your thumb, you know, your fingers, you can loosen and tighten to get this up and down. And then there's this other part down here, uh, which is the collar. And this stays tight and stationary. Um, you wanna make sure that this stays tight. So I would say every few months, you should check and see that this screw is tight. This keeps the, the bracket here attached to the lower part. And then this, this other part attaches it to the upper part. So keep, keep those tight, that's really important. The main tip I wanna share with you though, is with, with all of these things, is you need to not over tighten anything. So when you go to tighten this down, don't give it as much, don't push it as far as it'll go. Don't push it, just don't keep cranking on it. If you do that, you'll end up stripping these, uh, stripping the threads or uh, making it so that you can't untighten it. Um, a lot of times we bring our equipment in from the cold. Um, if you're outside in the cold, and you bring your stuff in and set it up right away and then tighten these down really tight. When they start, when all the metal starts heating up and expanding just from being inside, then you, you'll never be able to get these undone. You'll have to like cool them down again to get them undone. So just what I would do is I push my thing up as far as it needs to go. I tighten it just as much as it needs to be tightened not to fall down. That's as much as I do. And that will make your light stands last forever. By doing this little trick, you'll make your light stands last as long as you do. So the next thing I want to talk about is how to distribute the weight on your light stand. Uh, when you have a lot of weight on here, it can be hard to figure out exactly how to position it. And I want to talk about that briefly, and then we'll move on from there. Oftentimes, especially if we're using umbrellas, the weight of uh, the system that we have on top of our light stand is going to be heavier on one side or the other. It won't be perfectly centered over the center shaft of our light stand. So what we need to know is how to position it so it doesn't fall over. Uh, these legs do spread out quite a bit, but a lot of times we won't have enough room or it will just be so heavy that it will still want to tip over. The key is to put the light, I will kind of point these at you, is to put the light over an extended leg. So the heaviest portion of whatever the light system or umbrella system that we have up here, put that over one leg so that the leg is supporting the weight. One leg is supporting the weight. If you put it over two legs, you can see that A, they're shorter, so the leverage alone will tip everything over. The other thing about it, putting it over two legs is that they can spread apart if you don't have things tightened down really tight. Um, so if you're pushing, they can spread, spread apart. Putting it over one leg solves that problem pretty easily. So next, we're going to talk about uh, the metals involved in all the stands and how knowing about those is gonna help you uh, maintain your light stands for a longer period of time. So the last little tip I want to give you is about the types of metals that are used to construct all of this stuff and why they've chosen that. So a lot of times the uh, posts themselves here will be aluminum. Um, sometimes you can find them made of other materials. Older ones will be made of steel. Um, these are aluminum though. Most modern ones will be unless you spend a lot of money and get like carbon fiber or something like that. Once you get in here to the spigot, that's a brass. And then when you get into the hardware, the nut, these screws and nuts and bolts and stuff like that, that's steel. So you're working with three different types of metals, and there's a reason why they chose these. Uh, the screws and things, they're made of steel because they're e that's the easiest thing to make them out of, and that makes them durable. They're moving parts, they need to be durable. Brass is softer than steel, and brass is about the same hardness as aluminum. 
So in theory, any brass that's rubbing against aluminum should wear at the same rate. But the brass is built to take a beating. If you look really closely at that brass spigot, you can see all the wear lines that are on there. Uh, it's built to do that. It's supposed to take a beating. Uh, you want to do that because you're going to wear down this before you wear down the screws. And the screws are more important than the spigot. It can be replaced pretty easily. The same goes for all of the internals on the top of our umbrella bracket and in some of the other things that we'll talk about. You have a brass spigot here. Uh, this is so whatever you're attaching, if, you, if this was a whole flash or a monolite system or something like that, you want that to last longer than this little piece here. So that's why these are usually made out of steel or aluminum, hard aluminum, and this will be made out of brass. So this is going to be replaced before this, and this won't wear out. So that's the idea with the brass and the steel there. The thing I want to talk about briefly is that sometimes they mess up. Uh, this is a very common Ween uh, optical slave. This is made out of some type of aluminum or some kind of metal that I've never even seen before, but it is very, very, very soft. So I always make sure I use my brass a spigot with this. Um, if my head, the head of my light stand has some type of metal uh, steel kind of attachment spigot there, I don't ever use those with this. Um, I always make sure I use brass and I always, I follow on my own rules about over tightening. I never over tighten this because I've actually gone through a few of these and they do not last long if you, if you really crank on the threads very much. So they don't always get it right, but the reason that these are brass and this is aluminum and these are steel and the screws are steel is all to make things wear correctly because you're going in and out, in and out, over and over and over again. And not only that, but this is supporting a lot of weight. So you don't want the screw to snap off. You want just you want the brass to take the brunt of the of the force and the wear. So just something else to think about when you're kind of using your light stand and also just to keep in mind how to maintain and keep all these things working. This, um, this umbrella bracket is, I think, 15 years old. This light stand is the same age. And they're, they work exactly the same as the day I bought them because of the way they were designed with the brass and the steel and also just me knowing how it all fits together and why it's made that way. So just keep that in mind when you're using this stuff. Realize what's going to wear down first and what isn't. And if something is designed poorly, keep that in mind too. And you should just be able to tell by the type of metal it's made out of if it's going to cause any kind of problems. So I think that's it for our three tips. Thank you so much for following along today with our light stand tutorial. I know these are not the most complex pieces of equipment, but there are a lot of nuances to them that people overlook. If you haven't purchased light stands already, I hope that this tutorial will inform your purchase and make you uh, make the right decision to buy the right gear the first time, depending on your needs. If you already own light stands, I hope this tutorial helped you learn to maybe maintain them a little better. Uh, to use them a little bit more properly to make them last longer. Thank you so much again for following along. I can't wait to come back with you, come back to you with another great tutorial. See you soon.